Welcome everybody to our first lecture uh, in the transportation engineering. This course is offered for this the construction and civil engineering department. My name is Wael Desuki, and uh, I will be teaching you this course this semester. Okay. Here is a list of the contents for this course, and there is a, uh, 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 some uh, critical dates that you need to be to pay attention to. Uh, first of all, the course is divided into three modules. The first module, we will focus on traffic engineering and traffic engineering flow characteristics, highways, and, and so on. On the second module, we, our primary focus will be on highway design. Specifically, we will focus on the design criteria and the horizontal and vertical alignments. On the third module, we will focus on pavement design and construction. We will emphasize more on the construction. Okay, we will discuss the flexible pavement, the design and construction uh, of rigid pavement, field compaction tests, and quality and survey uh, quantity surveying and the quality uh, control issues that you might face after graduation and working in the uh, highway construction industry. Okay, uh, as you can see, there are four bold lines that these are the, the, the dates for the, you know, the first quiz, the first midterm, the second quiz, the second midterm. So now you have these four dates Okay, that's the 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 the, uh, the the date and the time for quiz number one, for midterm number one, for quiz number two, and midterm number uh, two. Okay, uh, and now we are going to discuss the course assessment. Basically, you will have two midterms. Each midterm will be for twenty percent. Then we will have two quizzes, each quiz for 5%. Then we will have another 10% for homeworks, participation, and et cetera, and small projects, and et cetera. Then the final exam will be out of 40%. Now, the textbooks, do you need any clarification regarding this assessment uh, scheme? <clears throat> okay, we move on to the textbooks and references. We primarily will focus on, uh, you know, because we have different modules in, in, uh, in, in this course and we cover different topics. So we have uh, uh, the, the uh, traffic engineering, that's by McShane and Ross. And we have another book, which is very good. It covers highway design and pavement. That's by uh, Gerber Hall, Traffic and Highway Engineering, second edition. We will be using the highway, capacity, the highway Capacity Manual 2000 because it has an SI uh, uh, units. Uh, it's not significantly different from the 2010, but that's what we'll be using. And we will have a selected design tables and handouts from Ashto. Okay, any questions? Okay. Then we start now with module one, traffic engineering. So what is traffic engineering? Traffic engineering is defined as the phase of transportation engineering that deals with the planning, geometric design, and traffic operations of roads, streets, and highways, uh, their networks, terminals, uh, opting lands, and relationship with other modes of transportation. That's the Institute of Traffic Engineering definition for traffic engineering. Any questions? Okay. What is what are the, the objectives of traffic engineering? What we are looking why we have traffic engineering? There's primary objective for traffic engineering, which is basically safety. Okay. So imagine an intersection without a traffic signal how things will be, we'll have accidents, okay, uh, and so on. If you if we look at it from that perspective, uh, so the primary uh, uh, objective for traffic engineering, that's safety. 
Then we have secondary objectives, which is speed, comfort, convenience, uh, economy, okay, and environmental uh, uh, compatibility. Okay, before we study the traffic engineering system, we need to understand the different elements composing this traffic system. So we have the first element, which is basically road users, drivers, passenger pedestrians, and bicyclists. Then we have the second element uh, of the system, which is vehicles. Then we have the third er element, which the infrastructure that is containing vehicles and road users, which is basically highways, streets, intersections, road uh, roundabouts, bridges, tunnels, railways, etc. Uh, airports, okay. Uh, then we have a, a third element, which is the traffic control devices, such as the signs, the traffic signals, and so on. Then the fifth element, which is the environment. That's a part of the system. Uh, whether lighting condition, day or night. However, for us, we have a control over the first four elements but this the fifth element which is, which is the environment that's not, that's outside of our control so any changes or or decisions we might take will be limited only to the four uh, the first four elements okay now let's start discussing the characteristics of the traffic system elements of these elements so we start with the road users we will focus primarily on drivers and pedestrians. As we know that uh, drivers and pedestrians are population, you know, there is variability between each driver. There is the va variations between pedestrians. So how can we tackle that? We tackle that ba basically by using uh, the statistical values, the 85th percentile and the 15th percentile. The 85th percent, this represents the maximum value. <clears throat> the 15th percentile represents the minimum value. Okay, the first characteristics that you are interested in will be driver's field of vision. Why? Basically, vision is the most important sensory system for the task of driving a vehicle. Why? Because drivers rely on their vision to detect hazards, make turn decisions, okay, selecting acceleration, deceleration rates, selecting safe speed. Almost all decision related to driving based on vision. First, <clears throat> this figure shows us the, the vertical field of vision. So that's uh, uh, for, you know, uh, we can see that we can see within 60 uh, uh, up from the horizon and 75 degrees down the horizons from the line of sight. And we can see here that we have a line of sight, then there's a, 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 a simple cone from three to 10 degrees. This is what we call the acute vision cone where we can see everything in details. We can read numbers, we can, you know, see the, the details. Then we have the second cone around this small cone, which is the clear vision cone. Then after that, beyond these cones, we have what we call peripheral vision. That we see, yani, we can see uh, things, but we don't see it clearly. We have to change our line of sight to these uh, targets. That's an example for the clear vision or the clear the acute vision and the clear vision cones then we have the horizontal field of vision the horizontal field of vision is basically for each eye is as we can see from here we can see that in this case the nose okay of the human being limit the side vision of the right eye and the left eye so we cover uh, 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 on the nasal side, we have limited uh, coverage, which is 60 degrees. But on the on the on the right hand side or the 
frontal side, it's, you know, from 90 to 100 degrees. As we can see, when we combine the vision or the field of vision for both left eye and right eye, we have an area or a field of vision, which is binocular vision. This is 120 degrees, okay, that we can see targets with our both eyes. Then we have monocular vision, which is basically peripheral vision uh, on, for each side. Okay. The first characteristics of the visual field, it's very, you know, it, it has a, a very sense, it is sensitive to speed of the person or, or, or the vehicle. That means if we are driving at 20 miles per hour, okay, the field of vision narrows down to 100 degrees. Okay, at 60 miles per, per hour, it becomes 40 degrees. Uh, this is an example, okay? And the speed here is 24 kilometers per hour. That's the field of vision or the, you know, when the speed goes up to 35 kilometers per hour, you see it starts narrowing. So that 24 kilometers per hour, 35, 40, 48. As you can see, the higher the speed, the narrower the clear vision will be. Okay. So what is the importance for the field of vision? How can we use this information? What, how can we utilize it? Basically, traffic engineers use field of vision for first, determining the, the, the placement for the traffic signs, where we put a traffic sign on the highways. And the second issue, which is determining the size of these signs and the fonts and, and so on. Then we use the, the field of vision in safety analysis. For example, if we have a black spot where uh, several accidents are recorded, the first thing we do, we do a, a side distance triangle check. We check for the field of vision and what the drivers are seeing or whether their vision is impaired in that location or not. Okay, any questions so far? Okay, then the second characteristics that we will be interested in for drivers will be the perception reaction time. What is perception reaction time? Basically, these are two times. That's the perception time and the reaction time. The first part, which is the perception time, that's basically defined as the time it takes a driver to sense, perceive, and understand the existence and nature of a stimulus. That means, for example, let's assume that you are driving on the street and you see an accident, okay? There is a time which is the perception to understand what you have seen in front of you, just to understand it and to, to see it. The eye takes time to sense, okay? Then it takes time to send the signal to the brain, to the cortex and to the visual cortex. Then from the visual cortex, it goes to, to the other parts of the brain to understand what's going on. Then the reaction time. The reaction time basically is the time it takes the driver to make a response decision. Be careful. It's the time that it takes the driver to make the decision, not the time to execute the decision. For example, if you take a, a decision to stop the vehicle or to press the brake and the, stop the vehicle, okay? That's the time, the time to make that decision. It doesn't mean the reaction time, it's the time of stopping the vehicle, no. You have to differentiate between both, okay? Okay, the design values okay. are important. Any questions? Okay. No. Thank you. The, desi the design values, basically the design values recommended uh, is 2.5 seconds. This is recommended by ASHTO for uh, any 
and for most computations involving breaking reactions, okay? Which is basically for calculating the stopping side distance. For uh, traffic signals and for traffic signal timing, the, 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 the design value is one second. The perception reaction time is one second, okay? As we can see that for designing a highway, for designing a, a, a horizontal curve or a vertical curve on a highway, it's 2.5. But for designing a traffic signal, okay, we take it one second. Why? Basically, a traffic signal, if uh, drivers are expecting that it's going to switch from uh, green to red. So it's something expected. But if you are driving on a horizontal curve and you make a turn and you see a, a, a truck, you know, overturned or something or accident, this is something that you are not expecting. That's why the ASH2 recommends a, high, recommend, recommends a higher value for the perception reaction time. Okay, now perception reaction time. What are the factors that affect the value of perception reaction time? First, age. Second, fatigue. If the driver is tired or, you know, have not been sleeping and driving for a long distance, so it, he takes, he or she takes a longer perception reaction time. Also, the complexity of the situation. If the situation is straightforward, but if you have to make, you know, choices, then if the situation is complex and you have to make, you know, uh, difficult choices, then it takes longer. Uh, the fourth one, which is that's the most critical one, which is the presence of alcohol or drugs in the driver's body. That means if the driver is, you know, uh, uh, intoxicated with alcohol or on drugs, basically his perception reaction time will go uh, high. Okay, so that, these are the characteristics of drivers that we are interested in. Just to recap what we are talking, wh what we discussed now, we discussed two issues, field of vision and perception reaction time. Both are the critical issues or the critical characteristics for drivers. Now for, for pedestrians, what are the characteristics that we are interested in? We are interested in the walking speed and in gap acceptance. Okay, what is walking speed? We need walking speed basically to determine how long a pedestrian will take to cross the street if the signal is uh, green or something. So this way we make sure that we allocate time sufficient for that pedestrian to cross the street safely. The recommended uh, 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 speed is one point, it's basically four, four feet per second, okay? And this covers, uh, uh, you know, the 85th percentile, the, the 15th percentile, that's the value, okay? That means 85% of the population, they walk at four feet per second or more, okay? Then the gap acceptance, Gap acceptance basically is defined as the acceptable distance gap between two successive vehicles in a traffic stream the pedestrian is trying to cross. That means if you are trying to cross the street, we wait for, you know, gap between vehicles. Okay, so that's what we mean with the gap acceptance. What is acceptable? What is the, the acceptable gap? Of course, the gap acceptance depends on perception of approaching vehicle speed, number of lanes that you are crossing, and the age and gender of the pedestrians. The recommended design value, okay, was 125 feet, which is 37.5 meters. This covers the 85th percentile. Any questions so far? Okay. No, no question before. Now we move on to vehicles. That's the second element of the traffic system. Okay. First of all, we have to understand the classification of vehicles. And we will discuss the turning characteristics, stopping 
and climbing characteristics. First of all, the ash two, it means we have uh, uh, four categories according to, uh, to, to, to the ash two. We have passenger cars, buses, trucks, and RV, which is recreational vehicles. The ash two also defined 20 design vehicles under these categories. What we can see here, all of these are considered passenger cars. You know, uh, 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 you know, SUVs are passenger cars. Uh, uh, pickup trucks are passenger cars. Minivans are considered passenger cars. So when you are counting traffic, okay, the 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 Ford 150 on the left corner here, this is not a truck. This is a passenger car. Okay, you have to be careful about that. Then these are the buses. The buses, as we can see, that's the intercity bus, okay, or the transit bus, or the school bus, or articulated bus, or the van. This is the, the one on the corner here. This is the, the, the van that what we consider as a small bus. Okay, for trucks, these are trucks, okay starting from uh, two axle trucks to 18 wheelers. All of these are trucks. Now, regarding the recreational vehicle, what is the definition of recreational vehicle? Basically, it's motor homes or any passenger car towing uh, uh, any type of uh, uh, recreational trailers like camber trailers or jet ski trailer or boat trailer. In th this combination, we call it RV, recreational vehicle, not passenger car anymore. Okay, so the, 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 what we discussed before here was basically the uh, ash uh, classification for vehicles. Again, we have passenger cars, buses, trucks, and RVs, recreational vehicles. We move on to the turning characteristics of uh, vehicles. We have two types of turning characters. We have the low speed turning characteristics, okay? And the high speed. In the low speed, what we are interested in is basically low speed turning is governed by vehicle geometry, okay? Each design vehicle, has the following critical attributes. We look for the attributes of the design vehicle, okay? First, the minimum inner turning radius, the wheelbase uh, width, the minimum outer turning radius, and the path of the front overhang, okay? These attributes must be taken into consideration in the geometric design of traffic facilities. These are a, a, a template, what we can see, this is a template for a design vehicle, and we can see that's the front, the bed of uh, front overhang, the uh, uh, maximum turning radius, or the outer turning radius, and the inner turning radius, and the one on the, on the bottom, on the left hand corner, this is the, uh, uh, hold a second. This is the 2.44, that's the wheelbase uh, dimension. Okay, this is an example for low speed turning and uh, why we need it and how we can use it. For example, this is the application for uh, uh, low speed turning characteristics. We are designing the radius or the curve radius for at an intersection, we want to make sure that this curve will be will accommodate uh, 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 the design vehicle. And we can see for passenger car on the right, on the left, it's, there's no problem. But on the right, when we have a bus, okay, it's critical. In this case, we have an 18 wheeler, okay. So the parking, for example, is pushed back Okay, in order for uh, to accommodate 
uh, the design vehicle. Okay, that's for the low speed turning characteristics. For the high speed turning characteristics, basically, uh, as vehicles start turning, there is a centrifugal force exerted on the CG of the vehicle, okay? And what we can see here, this is the equation that is govern governing the, the, the relationship between the turning uh, speed and the radius and the uh, 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 super elevation on the road and the side friction. Remember, we have here a turning speed, this is in meter per second, and G, that is the gravitational force, or the gravitational acceleration, radius, that's the radius of the curve in meters, FL, that's the side friction coefficient, the side co uh, friction coefficient between the tires and the pavement, okay? E, that's the super elevation or the, the slope of the, or the side slope of the, of the, of the road. Of course, the, the coefficient of friction, uh, the side friction, okay, varies with, uh, with the speed. As the speed goes up, it goes down. This curve, we shall be using it for determining the turning, uh, the, 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 the side friction factor for different speeds. Okay, uh, we will have here an example we are trying to solve, which is basically given the design speed for a highway to be 120 kilometers per hour, please determine the minimum radius for a horizontal, uh, for a horizontal curve, for horizontal, for horizontal curve, if the super elevation was limited to be 3% and 8%. So how can we solve this problem. Okay. So what is the governing equation? We have E plus F equal V square over uh, G R. Okay, so here, what do we have? We have uh, uh, the 3% and the 8%, these are the suggested value or the limit for the super elevation. So we'll try with 3%, which is 0.03 plus F. F is a known then the design speed is 120 kilometers per hour. 120 kilometers per hour will be, if we uh, convert it to, to uh, meters per second, we need to divide it by 3.6. Hold a second with me, please. So, this will be a 120 divided by 3.6. This will be thir equal 33.33. Okay. Uh, meter per second. Okay. So <coughs> let's see for that speed what will be. The, the, the coefficient of friction. So at 120, the coefficient of friction will be 0.85, for example. So F will be 0 0.85, 0 0.085, plus V square, which is 33.33, Square divided by G times R. Now we want to find 
what's r radius so basically we can say that r equals the 33.33 square which is One 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 point one one divided by now when we add these together it becomes four point one one five and we divide by nine point eight one so divide by 0.115, divide by 9.81. So we have 984.89 meters, which can be approximated to be 985 meters. In the case of, this is for, for, E equal 3%. For E equal 8%, uh, R will be 1111.11 divided by open bracket here and put E, which is 0 0.08 plus 0 0.085 divided by 9.81. So this one will be 686.44 meters, which will be we can approximate it to be 690 meters. Is that clear? Any questions? Hello? Clear, Doctor. Okay. Uh, let me just take the attendance, continue with the vehicle characteristics. The second most important characteristic for vehicles, which is basically the vehicle stopping characteristics. Vehicle stopping can be divided into the following phases. First, we have the perception reaction distance. Let's, let's assume that someone is driving his car, then he sees an obstacle, okay? By the time he makes his own decision, we have a perception reaction distance, okay? This distance is basically the initial speed of the vehicle, okay? Multiplied with the perception reaction time. Then, for example, this, this person decided to, this driver decided to press the brakes, okay? So he started the brakes at that location that we can see on the screen, then, from here until he hit the light pole here, okay? He starts with initial v uh, uh, speed and ends up with a final speed. When we apply the, the kinetic uh, laws, okay, and the work exerted by the brakes, we can come up to this relationship, that D2, this distance, okay, will be V initial square minus V final square divided by two multiply G multiply F. F here is different from the side friction. F here, it's the longitudinal friction, okay? Then the total stopping distance, DS, will be the summation of the two distances, D1 plus D2, which can be seen here that the stopping distance equals the perception reaction distance plus the braking uh, distance, okay? 
which is this equation. So here we have uh, VI, that's the initial vehicle speed in meter per second, VF, final vehicle speed, G, that's the gravitational acceleration in meter per second squared, F, pavement longitudinal friction coefficient, it's 0.348, this is fixed. Uh, G, that's the vertical grade, which means if the, the, the highway is going up or down, so that's the slope of the, of the, of the, of the road. Okay, we're going to skip this. We're going to take this problem. Okay, this is not a homework. This is an example. Okay, this example is from a traffic engineering book by McShane and Ross that I, I, I mentioned before. And we are going to try to solve uh, this uh, Okay, let's have a break now for 10 minutes, then we'll be back at 11.10. Okay, everybody? Okay. Okay, let me just check because I see that there's reduction in the number of the attendees. We have two. I don't know where it went. Anyway, we'll check later. Okay, guys. Okay, we are back. Uh, the last thing we stopped at was this example. Uh, the example here it says that we have a driver traveling at 100 kilometers per hour rounds a curve on a level grade to see a truck overturned across the roadway at a distance of 120 meters. If the driver is able to decelerate at a rate of 0.31 G, okay, at what speed uh, will the vehicle hit the truck? Plot the result uh, for reaction times ranging from 0.5 to 5 seconds with in increments of 0.5 seconds. Comment on the results. Okay. Let's try to solve this uh, 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 problem. So what's saying here? It's saying that there is a, a, a vehicle driving on the road. Okay, it's not clear. This is a vehicle. Driving on a road at 120 kilometers, okay per hour. Then it see a truck overturned in a curve. Okay. At a distance, how much was the distance? Uh, no, it was driving at 100 kilometers and it sees this at 120 meters. Now the question Okay, when this vehicle arrives to that point, is it going to hit the truck or not? And if it's going to hit the truck, at what speed? So V final equal how much? But he gave us different values for T, P, R, T. It says plot the values for 0.5 seconds to 5.0 seconds. Okay, so let's uh, uh, try to solve it. So here we have distance, stopping distance, equal V initial multiply T uh, P R T plus V initial square minus V final square divided by 2 G F plus or minus 0.01 G percent. So, in the question, it didn't say, the, the question didn't say anything about the grade. So we'll assume that G equals zero percent. That means it's a level grade. Okay. Then, the V final, that's the unknown. 
So let's put the V final in one side and the rest of the problem on the other side. DS, that's 120. 120 meters. TPRT, this is the variable here. And V initial is known. Okay. But there is an, another issue, which is the friction. The friction here will be, let's go back, read the problem. It says that the rate of deceleration was 0.31 G. That means for this specific problem, the F was 0.31. Okay? Because basically, F multiply G, that's the rate of deceleration. Okay, now you see the camera, right? And you see the, the, the example with me, right? Yes, we can. Yes. Okay, so we have V final equal the square root of the following. First, we have DS minus this. So we have 120 minus V initial, V initial to 100. So the 100 means if we divide it by 3.6, so 100 divided by 3.6, that would be 27.78 meters per second. So this is 27.78 multiply with by TPRT. And all of this multiplied with 0.3, that means 0.62 G or VF. Oh. Then, oh no, no, we did something wrong here. Let's just take it step by step. We have DS minus V initial multiply TPRT equal V initial square minus V final square divided by 2GF because G1, G is zero here. So we are not going to take it into consideration. So we multiply this over here. So we have 2GF multiply DS minus minus V I T P R T equal V initial square minus V final square. That means we can say that V final, we take V final here and we would, will equal to square root of V initial square minus, okay, which is 2 G F, which is 0.62 multiply G, which is 9.81, multiply 120 minus 27.78, multiply T, P, R, T. Okay. And we have V initial. It's uh, 27.78. So we can reduce the problem to be V final equal square root of <coughs> uh, 27.78 square, that's 700. And 70, 771 minus uh, 771.6 minus the other part, which is 0.62 times 9.81 multiplied 120 minus 729.8 plus uh, 0.62. 
be 9.81, okay, V 27.78. Plus one six eight point nine six V T P R T. So basically V final equal square root of uh, seven seven one point six minus seven two nine point eight forty one. Plus 168.96 multiply T P R T. Now let's solve this problem. Square root of 41.8 plus 168.96 times 0.5. Okay, so V final. It's T, P, R, T, and we have V final. Let's try at T, P, R, T 0.5 seconds, how much the V final will be. It will be 11.23, that's in meter per second, and here that is second. Okay. Now let's put it one second. It's 14.5 meter per hour. If it's 1.5, this will be 17.18 meter per second. If it's 2.0, this will be 19.48, 2.5, this will be 21.5, by the way 21.5 this is uh, how much, if we multiply it by 3.6, convert it back to uh, meter per, to kilometers per hour. Uh, let's put it just a straightforward at five seconds, 5.0. At 5.0, this is supposed to be 29.775. Okay, please note that 29.775 Seven five. This is greater than the initial speed, so it will never reach that value. Okay, so actually, it's somewhere before that. It will be. It will stop. Okay, at four seconds, this will be twenty six point seven eight eight. What does this mean? It means after four seconds, okay, this guy, okay, will not, will have not been, you know, started pressing the brakes. Basically, the perception reaction distance, okay, will be longer than 120 meters. Let's see what we mean with this, okay. The distance is 120 meters, okay? Divide this distance by 27.78, okay? If 120 divided by 27.78 equal 4.31 seconds. That means if the perception reaction time for this driver is greater than 4.3 seconds, that means he will be still thinking what to do by the time he hit the truck, okay? That was an example that we showed how we use the stopping criteria in determining the final speed and how, how does this affect the vehicle 
uh, basically we use these kind of equations for safety analysis and for uh, similar issues. Any questions, Shabab? Okay, so that's another uh, uh, problem. I'm gonna leave it for you to try to solve it. Here it says the minimum radius of curvature to, uh, may be uh, designed for safe operations for vehicle. Okay, e. that's a curve design. Okay, now we move on. So, so far we have covered the characteristics for uh, uh, road users, which is basically drivers and pedestrians. Then we cover the characteristics for vehicles. Okay. Now we are going to uh, uh, start discussing the characteristics of the traffic system, the traffic stream, or the infrastructure. Okay. So when we talk about traffic stream, we have two types of traffic streams. We have uninterrupted and interrupted. This is uh, different than in fluid mechanics when we talk about laminar flow and uh, non-laminar flow. No, this is not the same. This is not the same analogy. But uninterrupted and interrupted, okay, can be defined as the following. Uninterrupted, uh, that means the flow facility, okay, or the traffic stream, uh, vehicles are not stopped by uh, a traffic signal or by a roundabout or by a stop sign, okay? However, the traffic stream might stop due to congestion, due to uh, accident internally. So it's, uh, uh, you know, that's the definition as you can see, and uninterrupted flow facilities have no external interruptions to the traffic stream. Pure uninterrupted flow exists primarily on freeways where there are no intersections at grade, traffic signals, stop yield, and so on. Interrupted. Yani, Shabab, if we look at uh, King Fahd uh, Highway, this is the freeway. For most part, okay, you can consider this as uninterrupted uh, uh, traffic stream. Okay, if we look at any uh, highway or any road in uh, in uh, in the mam city or khobar okay it's interrupted okay any questions so far <coughs> the interrupted are, are the opposite basically interrupted flow facilities uh, are those that incorporate fixed external interruptions into their design and operations like stop sign traffic signals, and so on. Hey, so area, Shabab. Okay. The traffic stream, we have two categories of traffic stream parameters. We have macroscopic parameters, and we have microscopic parameters. Okay. The macroscopic parameters are basically the volume or flow rate, the speed, and density. Okay. Microscopic parameters these are headway, spacing, and speed of individual vehicles. We will start with the traffic stream, uh, the macroscopic parameters, which is volume and flow rate, speed, and density. Okay, what is the traffic volume? The definition of traffic volume or, or flow rate is defined as the number of vehicles passing a point or a highway uh, on a highway uh, or a given lane or direction during a specified time interval. Okay? Yani it means the definition number of vehicles passing a point on a highway or a given lane or direction of the highway during a specified time interval. This time interval might be one hour, one day, one week, one year. Okay, and it's the units for it is vehicle per time. Uh, these are some uh, daily volumes. You know, we have average annual daily traffic volume. Okay, this is the traffic volume per day summed and averaged over one year. 
That's what we call the AADT. And there is the average annual weekday because during weekday we have different travel patterns than uh, during weekends. And we have uh, the ADT and AWT. That's the average daily traffic and the average weekday uh, traffic. These values differ from the two above because it's uh, not on an annual basis, maybe for three months, less than one year. Okay, how we use the ADT and the AADT? With a typical use for these values, basically for network planning and design, for feasibility assessment. If you want to, you know, if you have a, a prioritization for maintenance, we use these values as guidelines or as a decision criteria. Okay, but we don't use it for design. These are examples for the traffic path, for the, for the average annual daily traffic volumes. We are not gonna, uh, okay. Daily traffic volumes are useful for planning purposes, but it cannot be used for design and operation of traffic facilities. Why? Because traffic volume varies significantly over the 24 hours. ليه احنا ما بناخدش الكلام ده ما بناخدش القيم بتاعت المتوسطات دي المتوسط اليومي في الديزاين او الاوبريشن سيمبلي بيكوز ذير از فاريابيلتي ديورينج ذا ذا داي از يو كان سي ذيس از ا ترافيك باترن اوكي ديورينج 24 hours ات نايت ذا فوليوم جوز داون ذير از ا مورنينج بيك اور اوكي the volume goes high, then there's an afternoon peak hour, usually not as severe as the morning peak hour. So due to these variations, we cannot take the average. The average would be something like this line. If we take the average, it would be something like this line. Okay? But as you know, when we make a design, we make a design for what? We make a design for the worst case condition. So basically, our design will be for the peak hour, for these values. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, doctor, we can. Okay. So our design value will be for this value, for the peak hour value, not for the average. Okay. That's why I said that, you know, we don't use the average annual daily traffic or the average daily traffic for design or operations, but we use it to judge. Basically, it gives us the number of, uh, of people that are affected by this highway or this facility. يعني بيدينا indication. كم واحد بيستخدم الطريق ده؟ مدى أهميته إيه؟ Okay? فلو بنعمل decision في investment أو في استثمار مثلا إعادة تأهيل الطريق أو something like that we, we, we use these values but for design we don't use it okay so what do we use we use something else which is called the directional design hourly volume the directional design hourly volume is derivative from is can be derived from the average annual daily traffic volume by multiplying it by the factor K and D what is K and D? K is a proportion of traffic volume occurring during peak hour. D is the direction proportion. Basically, the AADT is two direction flow. It's not one direction. يعني يا شباب, AADT, the volume in both directions added together. Okay? So, the K these are the typical values for K. It varies by the facility type, whether it's rural, suburban, urban, uh, 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 radial routes, okay, circumference, uh, circumferential route, yeah, the tariq or tariq mahwari, tamam? Deal K factor, these are the K factors. What is the K? Read it here. The proportion of the traffic volume occurring during peak hour. Basically, that's the K here this percentage that's the k that we use okay so what is the d 
That's the directional split, as we mentioned. During peak hour, you always find one direction, the traffic volume is heavier than the other direction, or the density of the traffic is you know, higher than the other direction. That's what we call directional split, okay? However, in urban areas, you will see that both directions almost similar. For example, uh, during morning peak hour, okay, if we look at King Fahd uh, uh, freeway, okay, both sides of the freeway, you almost find that, you know, there is almost the same uh, 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 density or traffic density, right? Here, it's almost 0 0.5, 2 0.55. However, if we are talking about a rural area, for example, the, the highway from uh, Gatif to Dammam. In the morning, you will see one side busy, the other side is, it has light traffic, and so on. You get the point? Okay. One of the, uh, of the parameters also regarding the, the, the volumes, which is the peak hour factor. First of all, what is peak hour? Peak hour is defined as the single hour of the day that has the highest traffic flow rate. Okay, how we estimate the, the peak hour factor? The peak hour factor is estimated by dividing the volume of the peak hour over the uh, four times the V max 15. Okay, this is not clear without example. Let's have this example, okay. First of all, we look at these values. We do a count when we want to identify the big hour, we go and we start counting volume every 15 minutes, okay. So we can see here that the time interval from 6.30 to 6.45, from 6.45 to 7, from 7.50, and as you can see here. And this is the traffic volume, okay? We look for the four consecutive increments which have the highest traffic volume, okay? Or ha having the highest summation. And these values, okay? So here, the big hour, The peak hour is from 7.15 until 8.15, according to the values that we see here, okay? Then, what is the peak hour factor? Peak hour factor will equal to, okay, let's, let's just uh, calculate the volume, peak hour volume equals 745 plus 865 plus 825 plus 725. So the big hour volume that's 3,160 in the units, vehicle, bear, hour. Okay, now we want to calculate the peak hour factor, PHF equals 3160 divided by, we look for the highest 15 minutes. Where the highest 15 minutes? That's 865. We multiply four, multiply 865. Based on this, the big hour factor becomes, can be calculated as four multiply 865, 0.9133. Clear? So that's an explanation for this equation. So here, Okay, 
So V, that's the volume, the big hour volume, divided by four multiply V max 15. Hey, so early, Shabab. Okay. Uh, I will stop here. And uh, uh, doctor. Yes, hold a second. Fee 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 soal. Uh, ايوه دكتور عن سؤال. مين بيتكلم؟ هل ال 